deep is gone. My heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe how much I've let you down. But I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. Reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory will take the time care for one like me, but I read in the Bible that old story, how he pled for my forgiveness while he was dying on a tree, please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I'll serve you. Till my dying day, help others find the way. I'm at your mercy. need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me.
more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. Then forever I will be with the Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Hickox Baptist Church this morning. How about open us in prayer this morning, Derek? Amen. Got a few things on the calendar. Of course, this morning's homecoming. I'd like to invite everyone to come be with us over in the social hall after the morning service. There'll be no evening service this afternoon. On April the 4th, there'll be ladies quilting at 10 a.m. <clears throat> April the 10th, there'll be a deacon meeting following the morning service uh, in Brother Jamie's office. Uh, April the 17th, it'll be Easter. There'll be no evening service, but there's going to be a sunrise service at 7 a.m. Breakfast will be served between the sunrise service and Sunday school. Uh, normal Sunday worship will follow Sunday school, and the men will be cooking breakfast. On April the 17th, children will be singing and playing bells during the 11 a.m. service. On May the 8th, there'll be uh, Mother's Day, no evening service. On May the 15th, there'll be a graduation service during the morning service, refreshments to follow. June the 5th through the 9th is Vacation Bible School. Thursday service will be at 6 p.m. with a special program for all ages to be held at 7 p.m. Also, the seniors that the church has right now is Riley Johns, Amelia Cruz, Chris Steely, Jojo Steely, Matthew Haynes, and Blake Rollerson. We also need individually wrapped candy for Easter for Children's Church. We got a couple praises <clears throat> this week. Uh, Brother Jamie Giddens, uh, he has a, a procedure done. And... Uh, Brother Ronnie had one done. Uh, also, he had Spring Revival with Brother Jerry Vines and Hazelhurst this past week. There were several saved there. Mr. David and Miss Arlene Jacobs. Uh, Mr. David's recovering from a fall and a stent in his leg. Kristen Upchurch. Miss Ruby Thomas. All the work and workers, pressure washing and mowing the grass this week. I was asked to read this. <clears throat> You're a really special person. Your love of life and of people shines through in so many ways. Miss Letha Tucker would like to invite you to attend her 95th birthday celebration. It will be at the Harborview Nursing Home in Jessup on April the 10th at 2 p.m. Love to all. Uh, the Harborview Nursing Home phone number's on here and Cindy Dashnall's phone number's on here. And I'll put this on the bulletin board where if you want to call her or be a part of this birthday celebration. But uh, I'm sure she'd like to hear from you. There were 66 in Sunday school this morning. Please invite some to come be with us. Uh, if you'll notice, the, all the concrete work is done out front. It's still taped off a little bit. It needed another day or two to dry, and we'll take all the taping and stuff down, and it'll be finished. But uh, a lot of work going on, a lot of work still to come. But... Uh, just thank you for being here this morning. Well, good morning. Uh, you may find an error in the 
which I was not aware of in the bulletin. I was not with Jerry Vines. Uh, I didn't even know he was going to be there, but Sister Carolyn went there, and good news is people got saved. Uh, but anyway, it was a good thought. I appreciate it, though. Uh, Miss Jackie must be wanting a day off or something to put something like that in there. I don't know. But anyway, that that's uh, that didn't happen for me. But uh, anyway, don't forget, need to uh, stay with us, eat with us after uh, after services today, and uh, still still getting our messages lined up ahead as we go get toward Easter. Uh, who knows, it might be the last Easter we ever see when we see Jesus face to face. So stand with us, if you will, and we're going to sing a couple little songs together here and uh, offer to be following that, next, that second one. These are the days of Elijah declare
song was so fast the guy was running to take up the offering. Ain't that something? Amen. If you would stand with us, we're going to sing a couple more, and we're going to have a few specials right after that. How great thou art.
got some specials, and whichever one wants to go first is fine with me. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. He's been good this week. Great, ain't he? They, they said we was going to get a big old storm come through, but praise the Lord. God, God knows what we need and when we need it. He took care of it, didn't he? I tell you, I pray for those people out, you know, the tornadoes and destruction, and we live in a good little area, a good little neighborhood, and I thank God for that. Uh, homecoming. I don't know much about homecoming, but I know one day I'm going home, and uh, that's what we're looking forward to, right? And God, in chapter 14 of John, he said, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, there you may be also. And he talks over in, the, in Revelation about the streets of gold and the gates of pearl and the place that he's prepared for us that just eyes can't even imagine. We can't even imagine what's in store for us. So this song I'm going to sing this morning is work. I'm going home one day. Trying to get to the right key. I'm going to go down one. Yeah, boys. While traveling through this world below, I see great cities everywhere I go. But I know that soon their beauty will fade away. Waiting just for me, a place that will stand for eternity. I'm telling you the place where I'm going inside of this world. Inside of this world, out of this world. I'm telling you the place where I'm going inside of this world. Say goodbye. I'm telling you the place where I'm going is out of this world. But John saw that city coming down, dressed like a bride in her wedding gown. Said the walls were made of jasper, gates of pearl. But once again, God walked with man. Dries her tears with his own hands. I'm telling you the place where I'm going is out of this world. It's out of this world. Out of this world. I'm telling you the place where I'm going is out of this world. No more crying and no more tears. No more dying and no more fears. The river of life is flowing by where we'll never have to say goodbye. I'm telling you the place where I'm going is out of this world. I'm telling you the place where I'm going is out of this world. Can y'all help me sing one? I'm sure you can. They used to call it the Hickok's Anthem, brother. So we're going to try it. That's right. That's right. The, the, what, what's that? The National Anthem? This is the Hickok's Anthem, right? In my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. See, my Jesus there, it will be so great. When I get to that land in my room of white, I will fly away. First I'll hear the trumpet sound. All the saints will be heaven bound. When we cross over Jordan white, 
stop and view the other side. Then I'll see those holy hills and my mansion he has built. I'll be the first one in the line. Gonna see my name in the book of life. In my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. See my Jesus there, it will be so grand. When I get to that land in my robe of white, I will fly away. Now it's gonna be a wonderful time when we get to the other side. See our loved ones gone before. We'll depart them nevermore. We'll be rolling on streets of gold, surrounded by our riches untold. When I first look upon his face, I'll know I'm safe his amazing grace. In my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. See my Jesus there, it will be so grim. When I get to that land, my robe of white, I will fly away. In my robe of white, I will fly away. in that store and he liked to drop his pizza he had for breakfast when I asked him but anyway if anybody else got a special they can if y'all don't get more excited about Jesus coming and in that robe of white that we're going to wear one day he's coming and I'll tell you what when we get to heaven I'm going to see some of you actually break that shell of solemnness and I'm going to see you run by, I'm going, I knew that girl had it in her. I knew she could do that. I knew the spirit was in her. I knew she could do that. Well, you better do it now. Because if you don't want to do it when you down here, you're going to be out of place when you get to heaven because there's a lot of charismatic people going to be up there. And I'm going to be one of them. Y'all already know I'm a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. So act like it, okay? Man, if you... If you go to a birthday party and you don't have the hat or the horns or all like that, why do you eat the cake? I'm just telling you, why do you eat the cake? Have a good time in the Lord, I'll tell you. Uh, today, if you would, open your book again to Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. Uh, I'll go back to about verse 57, 54 when I start this morning, but uh, just a, a few shout-outs. We got uh, a kind of, uh, we ain't got kind of, we got a special need. Uh, uh, Mara's little baby, Miss Betty's great-grandbaby. Uh, is having some issues, still in the hospital. We, uh, y'all remember them. I know it went out on a text message and 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 all like that. Uh, but remember them. Uh, very unusual, what's going on there. But I think they may, they're on the lead. Maybe they'll find out what it is. But I know who knows, and I know who can fix it. Okay, uh, so that's all that matters. Good to see Miss Wanda back. Uh, she brought a friend with her. Uh, uh, is that your cane? Oh, that's hers. I'm sorry. Are y'all sharing that? She's got a brand new knee, right? You don't have a brand new knee? She don't need a new knee because she walked in perfectly fine. All right, but glad to see everybody here. I knew I'd stick my foot in my mouth. I really thought she had it done. All right, but anyway, glad you're all here. Glad you got your Bible with you, and I'm glad if you'll stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. We are getting closer and closer to the scriptures where our Savior rose from the grave. But we don't need to forget how he got there and what he did and, and his decision making as he got there because that decision was based on salvation for a lost world. And he went through a lot of stuff, but we want to look at it. Uh, if you look with me there in verse 54, I read that verse, uh, uh, I think it was Wednesday night, but uh, nevertheless, I'm going to read it again and, and uh, get into the message this morning. I want to entitle that, Be Careful Who You Associate With. Be careful who you associate with. In verse 54, it says this. He says, Then took they him. Who was them? It was 
the enemy. It was the, the Sanhedrin. It was the, the priest soldiers. It was all those who wanted to do away with Christ. And, and Christ had said in 53, you had me in public all these times and you never offered to do that. Now you come at night when ain't nobody around. Why didn't you do it then? But here it is. And they took him. That's who took Jesus. And it says, and they led him away and brought him into the high, high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And in verse 55, he says, And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Huh. This morning you're in the house of God and you will be sitting among like fellowship, Christians, brothers and sisters. But yet they may be one here, whether I know it or, or you know it, maybe not actually a brother or sister but yet they're sitting among us. But I would say, outside of the realm of Christianity, be careful who you have fellowship with. Let's pray. Father, I know today is a homecoming celebrating the, the, this church and what it means. And God, for all the years, the doors are still open and your name's being proclaimed. God, and all we, all we desire is, uh, Lord, to keep the the spiritual health of the church going and souls to be saved and uh, a place where we can gather and bring our petitions and actually have fellowship one with another, God, that we can show Christ's love, God, to keep things going. We thank you for the past. We thank you for the very ones whose hands, Lord, uh, put the brick and mortar to the very first place where your people would meet. And God, through all the years and the times, God, we're still here. And it's not nothing to do with the people sitting here or the ones going on. It was because of you, God, because little is much when you're in it. And God, we thank you. All you asked, if we would just have the faith of a mustard seed, we could move mountains. And God, we stand and we sit in the mountain that you had had for us when we did a little bit and you did a lot. Thank you for that. God, there may be one here that's never made that decision. I pray, God, you'll be tender in that heart right now. But, God, as we preach to the, your, the church folks, we, we, we preach to your children, God, let us always be careful that the devil's always up to something. And, God, we need to be weary of the wiles of him. Go with us now. Have your will and way. And all God's people said, Amen. When we look at the story thus far uh, in Luke's gospel, uh, Luke's notorious and, and, you know, even some refer to him as Dr. Luke and all that. He had, brings more detail in a lot of situations that's found in the other gospels, and especially uh, this one. Uh, yet there's a few things he don't mention that the other ones do, but that don't mean it didn't happen. It just means that's how he recalled it. It's the gospel according to Luke. And uh, it's just like your life, it's going to be the gospel according to Sue or Joe or Sally. It's your gospel, what you're living by. That's what Luke found. And uh, here we know that uh, Christ has been betrayed uh, by Judas. He came and kissed Jesus and showed the ones. And uh, we know that uh, Peter cut the servant of the high priest ear off and Jesus reached down and picked up that ear. And yeah, I don't know, I always think about that. I always think about... Uh, pig ears and rice when I read it. I don't know, but uh, he reaches down and he, and he puts it back on his head. I mean, I, I, there's not even a scar there. You hear me? It was though it never happened. That's what kind of work God can do. You know, put it back on there. Everything was so good that that same one was part of the arrest of Jesus. That's how amazing he was. Now, when we, we, we look all into the further right here, he just told Peter that the devil had desired to sift him as wheat. Now, Peter didn't know how it was going to happen. Even he said, it'll never happen. I'll never, never say never. Never say never. The things you see going on somewhere else, you don't never say never. It could come right to your house one day. And we're not, let me tell you, being born again, we're not exempt from temptations and trials. Uh, it's going to happen. Now, yielding to that is up between you and your relationship with the Heavenly Father. I believe the closer you walk with him, uh, the, the less chance you will have uh, falling into temptations. Sometimes temptations overcome us to the point that we think it's okay and we can still function as that and as a Christian. But, you know, God knows the difference. He knows the difference. So we see here, and the moment has come. They arrest Christ. He puts the ear back on. They arrest him. And notice how they said it. They took him away. 
You know, I, I, I'll say this. They took him away only because the Heavenly Father allowed it. They couldn't have took him away. It was not like they won a battle. God's son here would, if he'd have been in full protection and God didn't want this to happen, they'd have never laid a hand on him. I'll, I'll tell you that. But here we see there that they took him away. Now, he had been leading the whole time he's been on earth, and now we see in him being led. Now, what's leading him? Well, we, we look at the picture. We know it's people that wanted to deny the doctrine that Jesus was preaching. You know, uh, John the Baptist says, repent and be baptized. Jesus says, repent and be born again. And how you do that is because of what he was going to do, not what John could do, but what Jesus is going to do. And he, he's preaching that message, and it was kind of uh, messing up things. You know, there were some people, especially the priest in those days, was fixing to be of no use. He said, be careful, Brother Jamie. You mean the priest has no use? My friend, when I got born again, the Bible teach me that I became priest and king, that I have the rights to the port of glory. In those days, the, the priest is what would pray for people and, and lift up a uh, uh, sacrifice and lift up uh, a, a, a sweet-smelling Savior unto the Lord, and he would beg forgiveness for the, those people, and they would come and do their thing, and they would leave, and they were under that of, the, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of what the priest had done, believing in God. But when we, now that Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the dead, when we accept him as personal Savior, that third part of the Godhead moves within us. If the third part of the God is in us, that means we're a part of heaven. We got a part of us that communicates with God in heaven and we become kings and priests. Now that's not my words, that's the words of God. The priestly part allows me to communicate with my heavenly father. I mean, I'm so proud of that. Now he's being led away that they're going to try to do something. First of all, they want to eliminate him. Now, they may eliminate the body if God be willing, which he was, but they'll never eliminate the Godhead. Jesus ain't going nowhere. He's coming back, even though, and they didn't kill him. He gave his life up. I'll make that clear. What they'd done to him, he did not kill him. He gave his life. So he's being led away to give his life. And so it's kind of like loading up a sheep on the trailer to carry to slaughter. Now, we, 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 I don't know about y'all, but every now and then we'll get a cow that just don't like to ride. And when you try to put him in that trailer, he just don't know. And if he really knew that I was carrying him to Wainwrights, he would really show out. And, I, you know, but Jesus knew where he was going. The Bible describes it as he was a lamb that was led to slaughter. And he knew where he was going and he still went. So he allowed them to lead him in that direction. But we find out something uh, kind of unique. As close as Peter was to Christ, we see Peter and, and none of the other ten. Uh, of course, Judas, he, he, off, he ran off and hung himself. The rest of them scattered and Peter followed. At least he followed, but he followed a way off. You know, I'm, I'm afraid in the world that we live in, there's a lot of Christians that are still trying to associate themselves with Christ, but they're doing it from a distance. They're doing it from a distance. They want to have the luxury to participate in a sinful world, but yet let everybody else think or a fool think they're fooling God that they still are next to the king. Well, I got news for you, my friend. The Bible tells us, he says, if you were lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You, I'd rather you be cold or hot, not in between. Listen, you don't serve the Lord at a distance. When I was going to school and I was engaged to my wife, Y'all don't know, I, 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 she's not listening. Y'all don't know, her first, in, her, I, her first ring, because I've had to upgrade since then. Uh, after 36 years, you got, got to upgrade, because the body's degrading, you got to upgrade. Anyway, upgrade her to ring. But the first one that cost me, it cost me $300. Now, that's a lot of money from a guy who was trying to go to school full-time, work on a farm, making $3 an hour, and only getting two hours a day, how could I put that up? And finally, I saved up enough money, and I went down to the local jury, and I got a... There was more gold than diamond, but it wasn't a matter of the size of the diamond. It was for my darling. And I mean, I sacrificed and sacrificed, so I could make that. And we had, after that, we, we had a long-distance relationship, about 120 miles. That seemed long... It don't seem long now, but back in the day, you just didn't get up and run that far. People make them trips like that every day now. 
but we had a long-term relationship. And I'll tell you, nothing was sweeter when I graduated and, and she came to my graduation with my mom and dad. And, you know, often and I was telling her, I said, honey, I, I, you know, back then when you'd have to make a long-distance telephone call, I only had a pay phone, didn't have a cell phone. And mom and dad would let me sometimes charge to them or not, I'd save up. It took a dollar and 35 cent to talk to her for five minutes. But when I look at that and look at how people sometimes want to love on God and, and be a part of that, I think they think they're under a, 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 a pay phone circumstances that they're going to run out of money and run out of time. Let me tell you, my friend, the Bible says that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You can have that relationship with him, and it's not a long-distance relationship. They're tough on us. If you're long-distancing from God and not being that every moment of the day, and you're trying to serve him from a long distance, my friend, I'll tell you, it's tough. The problem is things can get in there. See, me and my wife would have to make sure that I would call her at the right time of the day so she would be by the phone at her house when I would call her. Because there wasn't no answering machines. And I didn't want her mom and daddy to hear what I had to say on the answering machine. But there wasn't no such thing. So we had to communicate. When you do all that, see how inconvenient them long, long distant relationships are? Well, my friend, it's a tough ho road to hoe if you try to have a long distance relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, you, you want to call him whenever you got a need. He wants you to talk to him because he loves you. He wants to have a regular, a uh, firm, you know. Uh, I, I remember seeing Zach and Anna when and, and they was dating. And when I counseled them, I, one of the questions I usually try to ask, I, and I asked them all, I, I, Donovan, I done it the same way. I, I, I just turned to him point blank. I said, Zach, do you love her? He said, oh, I sure do. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that boy loved that girl. He was proud of it. I believe I could have called him up here and he'd have said the same thing. I ain't going to ask him if he still loves her, but, I, you know, uh, Oh, he does. See there? That's what I'm talking about. He likes that. He wants to see her every night and be with her as much as he possibly can. And we should feel the same way. We could see, feel, feel the same way. And, you know, not only did he just tell me in words, y'all just witness how he really feels. He's proud. Let me tell you, I'm proud to be the son of the living God. I am proud to be a child of him. I, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed. I, I'm on, I'm, it's all right on homecoming to take my jacket off. Hey, um, I'm going to show you. This is empty. But shortly, it's not going to be that way. Something that just, just made my week. And I, I, I can't say any names, but I, I got a phone call. And uh, I, I got a, call, a phone call from my son. And... He said, Daddy, are you by yourself? Can I talk to you a minute? I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> Them's bad. And, and, and I could tell he was, he, he, he got emotional. I said, whew, I was about to need somebody to call. He said, I got this guy at work. He said, he called me, and I hope they aren't listening. I'm not going to call no names so nobody know who he was. He said, he called me, he said, he got, he's got to talk to me. He says, I, I, I know you're a Christian. That's why he was crying. He said, my wife had to talk the pistol out of my face last night. He says, and I'm, I got to talk to you. He said, I don't know who else I can call. He says, but I know that I can call you. See, Caleb's somewhat his boss in a big way. Bigger picture. Not every day, but yes, every day from a distance. And that tore him up so bad. He realized that trying to do a few things for Christ and try not to cuss and try not to do this and try not to do that and, and talk about it every now and then and, and, and insert it in the job place, how that can come and be a part, not living with Christ at a distance. I, you know, I, not, not that I, if someone else could ask about one of you guys, would they ever be able to say, hey, how are they? Or is, is one of the first few things they say they're Christian? If not, there might be a problem. Because we may be living too far from the throne. We may be too far from the cross. We may be living too far from the grave. 
And the, the guy was battling depression, so guess who he calls? Me. His, his humble words was, Daddy, I can't speak to that. you can I said you set the time and date up I don't care when it is we'll go he says it's tomorrow too soon I said no let me tell you you don't know the joy when your own son who has been a rascal. Like his dad, he wasn't perfect. That we got to that point that I can go with him to try to save a life. I didn't say I was going to save anybody's soul because I can't do that. Long story short, I, I barely got in my message, but we got dinner, so it don't matter. Got there, and he knew me. I knew him. Finally, when it got down to business, he says, if we're going to talk, let's go inside. So we went inside, and his wife wasn't home, which opened the door. So I just told him, I said, son, I, 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 we're going to talk about the Lord. I says, but I want to try to tell you my story going through what you went through. I never was suicidal like that, but I was a nut. And I told him, I said, you're talking to a nut. I was one of them guys. I, I was out of my mind. I said, but I'm screwed on the right boat. I said, I can tell you who can help you with all this. I said, first of all, Jesus can fix you. I said, not only that, he may choose to use doctor and medication. Or he may just choose you to just get on closer walk with him and this thing disappear. I says, but however it is, you need to be willing to accept what it is. And the problem was he was still waiting on medication. And he remembered, you know, I, I was really worried about when he got saved and, and, and how it all happened. It, did he get saved in a group thing where he just went up there and I asked about that and he says, no, sir, I'm going to tell you. He says, yeah, it was one of them D-now nights. I went up there with a group of kids and all like that. He says, but it was after that when I truly got saved. And he took me to the, the church in my mind, and he took me to the pastor's hand, and he took me to that place. Let me tell you, if you can't go to that very place where the Lord saved you, if you can't get within 10 foot of the area in which you were standing when Jesus come into your heart, I don't know that you ever had an experience because in my mind I can refresh, go back when I was letting seven, eight years old, however I was, I can tell you the time, I can take you to the place, I can tell you to the man who I talked to, and I can tell you about the one that saved my soul. And what happens here is the young man right then gave me ease about that, and I shared my story of depression. And here's his words. Now, folks, this was a shot in the dark that this could ever happen. How could he find me? When I told him everything I went through and what, what may have started it and what done all this and how and where I am now, he just looked up at me and said, Mr. Jamie, he said, you just read the book that I wrote of what's going on in my life. <laughs> I said, son, I'm not here because someone hired me to come. I'm not here because I'm going to get anything out of this materially. I says, and I'm here by divine appointment by the Lord. You needed to hear what happened to me and, and all like that. He says, everything you've said is exactly what's happened, and I think that's why I'm going through what I'm going through. He says, it's amazing. Let me tell you, my friend, I'm not bragging on me because, hey, it was a privilege. you hear me? I count it all joy to be able to do what I did, and, and I can look at that, and it strengthens my walk with the Lord that I got a purpose in this life. You need to have a purpose in this life that in the middle of the night someone could call you and say, I need you to pray for me. I need you to come share Jesus with me. I need you to come share your testimony with me. I need to do that. Well, if we look at the story today, Peter was one of those, but yet he was falling off at a distance, my friend. You need to close the gap. Close the gap. 
I don't know about you, but when I was learning to swim, and, and, and when I was a little fella, and, and we had a city pool in folks, and believe that folks and had a city pool, don't no more. Most of them learned to swim in the river. But I was there. You know how I learned to swim? Because there was someone standing right by me in that water. And when I trusted that they weren't going to let me drown, I learned how to swim. And how to make it through this life right here. If I walk hand in hand with Christ, I'll go out and I'll tread waters that I'm not sure I can make it in because he's right there with me. If I go to start sinking down like Peter did when he walked on the water, I start sinking down with him, he'll just pull me right up. I may get strangled. I I may think I'm a goner, but right at the right time in my life, Jesus reached down in the bottomless pit of sin and he pulled me up and now I'm victorious over that. Listen, you got to be close. You got to be close. He is a friend that will stick closer and brother. Yes. But he will not push himself on you. You get so far away, there's a lot of stuff that can happen to you that you uh, that'll beat you up and it'll not make you look like you're saved. Peter followed afar off. The Bible says after that that I read the next verse that when, when Peter got there, now you got to put your mind in there. They was in the, the priest's house is where they was at. He stayed close to the temple. But in the courtyard where he was at, there were some people there, and Peter joined himself to them people. And when he did, the Bible says they kindled a fire. Must have been cool. It was at night. They built a fire. Perfect situation for someone to hide. When does all the shootings usually go on in Jacksonville when you look at the news? In the dark. That represents evil. And that's when it all happens. We get amazed when somebody just does something like that in broad open daylight. They had the audacity to steal this right here in broad open daylight. Let me tell you what. That's how fearless the devil can be in getting your life and make you do something stupid. Well, here the situation is, Peter, goes, and he, the Bible says he adjoins himself to them. Now, you got to look at that. He joins himself to that. What he wanted to do was mix in. He still wanted to be close enough to Jesus, but he wasn't willing to go stand at defense and holler, Lord, I'm praying for you. Lord, I, I, I'll defend you. Lord, I'll do whatever. No, he was feared for his life at that moment. And there was a young damsel, the Bible says in the next scripture there, that come to him and she, the Bible says that she looked at him earnestly. She looked at him earnestly. What does that mean? She looked at him real close before she made an acquisition that, you know, he was a part of this because they just came through with the rest of the king of kings and the miracle maker, the one that had uh, give sight to the blind. The one that had even healed some of the soldiers' folks, children. And there he goes by, and the woman says, I'm pretty sure you were with him. The Bible says, Peter says, ma'am, woman, is what he said. I know not the man. Can you believe it? Well, we wouldn't say that, Brother Jamie. There ain't no way in the world I'll say it. You don't have to say it. You can live it loud enough that I, that I can hear it and everybody else can hear it. It's, it's what you look like in the dark. It, it's, it's how you operate. It's what your life looks like. I'll tell you the, the funniest thing. I, I'll get off of this. funniest thing is for me to have to go to the grocery store used to be unheard of. Every now and then I'll go pick up some stuff here and there and... Uh, because my wife is getting stronger in charge of me and uh, bossing me around. And uh, but I'll go by and pick up something. But what's amazing, when I used to go with her to buy groceries, I quit going because they cost so much and I didn't want to spend that money. But yet, if it was home and in the cabinets, I'd eat it till it was all gone. But I didn't want to go pay for it. I said, I can't stand this. you got to do this. I, I, just can't, I can't believe this stuff costs like that. But anyway, she goes, but... When you get in the grocery store, we go to this big grocery store one time, and you know, and, and I wasn't, I was preaching around and about, but I wasn't licensed, you know, I wasn't called, yeah, you know, I was called, but I said no, but uh, anyway, but I preached around a lot, of that, and here we go, we be 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 bopping down the aisle, and all of a sudden, seeing somebody way down yon on the other end, I said, hey, wasn't that so and so? There they took off. I said, man, I, they didn't even wave. What in the world? But as time has it, we went down every aisle of that store. I don't do that. If I'm after hog chitlins, 
I go to the back. Pickled hog feet, which I went and bought me a jar the other day, and they were very good, by, by, by the way. I went straight to the meat counter, and I was out of there. But with my wife, you go down to everyone, and as it would have it. We rounded one of them court, and there that person was. I know why they went and didn't want to see me. Because I saw what was in that buggy. But I got news for you, my friend. Had I not ever been there, the Lord saw that. That ain't all. All the other people that were in there that knows what we are and who we stand for and what we say we are and where our name's written down and all like that, they see you too. It's just a prime example that you're following a way off. You're not where you Because if you got close, you'd be under conviction about those things that you do that God's not pleased with. He said, why, so, why are you so ugly? I'm not being ugly. I'm trying to love you. I'm trying to tell you how to fall in love and get close to God. Because, man, I'll tell you, those moments you have with him. And, and, and when we left that boy's house that night, uh, Caleb don't drive very fast. I drive fast. He don't drive very fast. And, and I was kind of hungry. And we was trying to get back. And all like that, he about 50 miles an hour. We never run out of nothing to say. You know why? Because we was on a spiritual high. I was convinced the boy was saved. I was convinced that maybe we had a breakthrough. When a boy tells you that's done seen two or three doctors and he says, I've never had no one to clarify everything like you have tonight. I said, man, I, I got a Ph.D. in that. I said, you know how I got my Ph.D.? Because I was you. I was you. Brother Wayne Manning used to say this, and this is what Caleb told this boy. He says, don't ask the man about how to grow corn if he ain't got no corn in his crib. You need to find out. And you know what? Just a little talk with Jesus will make it right. You know why? Because he put corn in his crib on the cross of Calvary. And that day when the ground shook and the stone rolled away and he come victorious up from out of that place, I'll tell you what, those, those bushels of corn that was in his crib, it busted like popcorn and went all over the world that he could spread his word. And I'll tell you, it just went everywhere, a whole world that was lost. Don't fall away. Another man, let me get back to the story. Another man right after that talked and, and was right there still at that point, Peter was, Peter was still warming himself by the worldly fire. And there he was and warming again. And another man comes by and says, Hey, I know you are him. I recognize you. You were one of them. And his words was, he said, Man, I don't know him. We all know how many times that Jesus told him he would do this, right? Three times. That was number two. And, and Luke Luke puts it down like this. In a space of about an hour, you reckon he was feeling bad? Sure he was. But was he still brave enough to, if it ever happened again, to not do that very thing? No. Because another man that knew more about Peter than Peter really knew he knew, he says, I'm pretty sure you were worth it. You are one of them. Why? He says, because you are a Galilean. Let me tell you, my friend, that same thing could be said about a lost person who professes to be a Christian, who goes to church somewhere. And they say, oh, yeah, I know you're a Christian because you're a member at so-and-so church. You are a Galilean. Huh. Luke don't say it, but the other gospels speak of it, that he cursed and says, I know not the man. Who is it that he don't know? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the Bible says in a couple of ones, and especially in this one there, it says when he did that, immediately the cock crew. Crowed. And the Bible says that Jesus up there being holding turned and looked at Peter, and Peter saw him. Well, I've got news for you, my friend. In the spirit, God sees you all the time. There's an old song we used to sing. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it, but it says, There's an all-seeing eye watching you, watching you. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. It ain't your mom and daddy. It's the one you call Lord. He watches you all the time. He hears what you say. He knows what you think. Isn't that scary? 
It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You, you, you ought to know you've got to open line when, when you do that mess up. You can get right back and get right back in a relationship with him. Peter did that. And what happens after this is, was an amazing thing. The cock crew. Could you imagine Peter shamefaced, not wanting to look at him, not wanting to look over there, peeped over there, and he saw him looking at him. The, the, the rooster crowed. The Bible says, and right after that, Peter went out and wept bitterly. I told that young man the other day, I said, son, I said, there's a lot of ways you can relieve stress in your life. I said, one of them is not be too proud to cry. I said, because it ought to be built into every Christian. You get to a point when you're in a relationship with God and he gets close to you, it ought to turn the waterworks on. I said, there's tears of joy. I said, there's two tears. There's tears of sadness and there's tears of joy. I said, it's built into us as humans. It's kind of like when you get too much pressure on the water hose. It finds the weakest spot, and that's where it spurts out. It's a pressure valve within us. When I can't hold all the joy of Jesus and things he does for me, I cry. It ain't a shame. I'm so full it just starts oozing out my ears and my eyes and my mouth and everywhere else and I could hug a cat and I hate cats. But then there's the bitter ones. Judas witnessed that. He could not hang it. He could not handle what happened. He knew what he had messed up. He knew he had opportunity. He knew he, had, he could have walked, but he chose not to. You see, you really think that Judas could have got saved? Absolutely. He had all opportunity in the world, but he chose not to. And he couldn't handle it no more. He couldn't live with himself, and he went out and he hung himself. Well, do I think Judas is going to go to heaven? Well, I really don't know, but I don't think so. Unless while he was hanging on that cross, he repented. I'm hanging on that noose, he repented. I don't know. I can't answer that. But ask me this question. Do you think Peter's going to be there? Absolutely. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. If Peter don't make it, there ain't no way I'm going. If Paul didn't make it, there ain't no way I'm going. If the thief on the cross confessed his sins to God, if he don't make it, I ain't going. Why do you say that? Because I ain't no better than neither one of them. Neither one of them. I might be worse off than some of them. But I'll tell you this. When he did that, the Bible says the water works begin. What happened in Peter's life? Well, I'll tell you what happened. He come to himself and he says, you know, I never think I'll, I'll do this, but you know what? My fear overrode me, but now at this point, from this moment on, I'll tell you what, I'll never do this again. I'll go the all way. And Peter was the great leader among the disciples and all like that, even to the point when he he got out of the boat and walked on the water. He led them. The Bible don't never speak of Peter turning away again like that. Never. The message is today, when you think about, be careful who you associate with. When Peter was, a, if he'd have been among the disciples at that moment instead of within people, you think he'd have ever denied him? No. No. But who was he with? He was among the lost people. And he feared. And he was embarrassed. If I say I associate with him, they may leave me in there and do the same thing for me. Well, let me tell you what, my friend. If you don't say that you're in love with Jesus and live for that every day and the devil is truly your God, he will lead you away and utterly destroy you. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. It will make you stay longer than you want to stay. I don't know about you, but when I get ready to go home, I'm ready. I'd leave in the middle of the night if I had to. And it will cost you more than you want to pay. What will sin cost you? It'll cost you everything you ever worked for. I mean, I've been married going on 37 years. 
If I was just to turn my back on Christ, could God take her away? He, he could. I would, I, would, I would die. He'd take my kids, my grandkids. If sin took me away from him, and that would be my choice. I fear that loving God. I want to stay right. That he, nothing that I do affects none of that. And my friend, you don't, might not hear it said much, but I'm telling you, it can. Because sin sometimes carry on from generation to generation. If you don't believe that, read the Bible. It's true. Peter wept bitterly. Jesus looked back to him. And now we see a broken man because he walked away and he is affiliating himself with the wrong crowd. First step in trying to get right, my friend. My son said this to this young man the other night. He called him by name. He said, let me tell you, he says, and he confessed, he says, I hadn't lived it. I hadn't lived, I'll tell you, I, I got a bad temper and I got this and I, I hadn't lived, I ain't been doing right and all like that. I told him, I said, son, that's, that, that's where you need to start. You need to sell out to Christ. You need to get back where you need to be. I said, that's the first step. And my son spoke up and he says, and you may not be able to keep the same friends that you got. You ever thought about that? Who influences you? Are you influencing the friends? You may not have the same. I'd rather have a friend I could call in in the middle of the night to uh, pray for me that I, something's going on in my life or my family. Then I had to call a friend in the middle of the night and say, Hey, man, I'm in jail. Man, I ain't got no money. I ain't coming. What would you do? What advice would you, are you looking for from that association? You better stick with Christ. I'm going to go on down there uh, to 63 and it says, And the men that held Jesus mocked him. This is what Peter got to see right after he cried. It says, And, they, and the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face. And they asked him, saying, he said, They said, Prophesy, who is that that smote thee? And many other blasphemous, uh, blasphemous uh, spake they against him. You know what I believe that Peter come to the recollection of? Once he, he felt bad and he cried about what he'd done, he got to witness that. I believe Peter could look and say, I can't believe he's doing that for me. Are we witnessing and appreciate the slapping and the beating that Jesus got? Or are we adding more stripes to him? By being born again and not living for him. Or are we as Christians living a close walk with him? I'll tell you what, I don't know who, I don't, know how, I don't trust hardly no human being in this life anymore except my brothers and sisters in Christ. But the Lord Jesus, I know I can count on him. He's always there. He don't always give me the answer I want to hear, but it's the best for me. Did you hear me? It's the best for me. I couldn't do that because of what... Yeah, yeah, you can if you want to. You got to want to. You know, this is a homecoming day. We've been singing the songs about going to heaven. My friend, that's the telltale sign. When you accept Christ and, and you've done the best you can now, you'll stand before a holy God and he'll say, Enter in, thou good and faithful servant. And you come on in to the glories of the Lord and you have a place prepared for you and, and, and in your robe of white that he sung about, I'll fly away. Man, I'll tell you... If you're not in that number, where are you going and what, where are you headed? You're going to head to the one that you live for. You know what? And if you ain't careful, you'll see your friends there. But according to the Bible, you, that, those friends won't be your friend anymore because they're going to be in agony like you. Because the Bible describes the picture we know about as much about hell as we do heaven. I know that the soul of man won't never die in neither one of those places. And the Bible tells me that there'll be no clouds in heaven. There'll be no pain. We sung about that. What a day that'll be. But what we do know about hell is you won't never die and get away from it. But it never lightens up. The misery never stops. It only gets worse. The Bible describes it as this, where there is weeping, bad tears, 
wailing, screaming, and gnashing of teeth. As a young boy, I was just as mean as Daniel. I heard he was pretty mean. But I had one of them, what do you call them, Daisy BB guns? That one cock. I had one so young I'd have to put my foot on it and shoot that bad boy. But I got, I got to noticing that thing would do things to dogs. It was just funny. So I'd sneak around. I'd find that old dog not paying attention to what was going on. And I'd shoot him right in the rear and what did the dog do? The first thing he would do when he squealed, he would turn around and bite whatever was causing the pain. In hell, there'll be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. I don't know if you've ever been bitten, but that's a hurting thing. When you can't bite areas on you in hell that's hurting, but yet everyone that you bump into up there, they're fighting and clawing because they're in misery. Is that where you want to go? Is that where you want to be? My friend, you don't have to be because we have a Savior. Not only died on the cross, he didn't stay there. He went into a borrowed tomb because he wasn't going to need one permanent. His bones wasn't ever found there. He's going to come out of there one day, and that day that the power of God, that same spirit that went into Jesus is going to come into me one day. He come forth out of that grave, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He's got the keys to death and hell in his hand. He's coming there, and he left from there after he spent a little time there. And the Bible says that he went on to sit on the right hand of the Father where he's watching you and me. Don't get so far you can't see him. Don't get so far that it's been a long time. You ever called somebody? And they said, well, I ain't heard from you in a long time. Maybe God said that a few times. Yeah. He knows who you are. He ain't going to say, who is it? He says, it's been a while. What's your problem now? How, what, what got you there? You know, I don't know about you, but when I've ever had to come to that point, I always do the right thing to say, Lord, I knew better to do what I did, and I'm sorry. I knew better to do and live the way I was doing and said the things that I said. I knew better not to do it, but I did it. You say, well, I don't know. Yeah, you, you will if you really mean it. I, 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 I'm a firm believer that you ought to be specific in your prayers. Lord, forgive me of all my sins. Well, that's good. Do you want to name one? Name your biggest one. God, I got a problem with lying. Will you help me with lying? God, I got a, I got a problem with my ties. Will you help me with my ties? God, I, I got a problem with loving other people because I think I'm better than anybody else. When you start doing those things and you're recognizing you ain't where you ought to be and you're not all that in a bag of chips, you hear me? We're done all that in a bag of chips. We are what we are according to the scriptures and according to what I believe in the word of God. We are what we are by the grace of God. Period. That's it. I'm not here tattling and getting on to nobody. If you feel that way, maybe you need to come down here or do what you do where you're at. Man, this ought to be good news. I've had a few amens this morning when I was talking about some tough love. I, you know why them amens were there? They've been there and done that. They know that God will forgive and he'll do all those things, and that is the right thing to do. It's amazing when someone can get on TV and slap somebody. And it makes the news everywhere. When we're fixing to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And it's going to deal with candy. Some baskets. And a long-eared made up creature. When that has nothing to do. With that day. Nothing. 
we need a reality check. When you get up in the morning, I, 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 I say this a lot of times. They say, well, good morning. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Well, I'm all right. I'm going, uh, you sick? No. Well, it's Monday. I got to go back to work. I said, man, I, hey, I'm breathing and I'm upright and I'm not six foot under. Yeah. You ought to see me try to get out of the bed this morning. <laughs> Especially if, if I'm running a little late, my wife's behind me like a shot wild, wild dog. I'm not that fast anymore. But I'm glad to put one foot in front of another. I pray and thank God for the day that he allowed me to make it. And if I accomplished something that day, I thank you for the accomplishments that I had that day. And I look forward to another one. Because you know what? If I fall asleep tonight and you guys have to put me in a hole somewhere, I'm not in that hole. I'm with him. Will you be with him? We none not know. I share this, I'm going to close. I see some of you getting hungry. I'd rather you be mad with me about something else, but hungry, don't get in front of it. Just out of the blue, Judge Mama got struck by a car, T-boned. Bam. Judd lost his dad very close to the same place that his mama got struck the other day. Lost him. But had it not have been for the, the grace of God and the love of God, it told her her truck. She was stopped at a stop sign. A guy swerved to miss somebody else. It was like with a, a F-250 or F-350 work truck. Hit her right now. She's got a few cracked ribs. She said, I had a fresh knee replacement, but it's okay. She's sore and she's kind of beat up a little bit. Emerson don't know because she would just bawl her eyes out. And you look at that, you know what the world would say? Boy, she was lucky. No, she was not. She was saved by the grace. She was saved by the Savior who loves her, who died for her. She is with us today because of that. Who is your guardian angel? I hope it's Christ. Let's stand and pray. Father, God, we could just brag on you so much because you never failed. You loved us so much you died for us. You gave your life for us so that we could live. God, I pray we, we don't love you from a distance. Oh, we just use you like a livestock trailer only when we need it. God, we need you every hour. We need you every minute of the day. We need to act like we need you and walk with you. God, we need to be giving off heavenly vibes, not worldly vibes. And that is a token of love. God, I pray through this. We would none talk bad about Peter because we all probably been there or worse. But God, we would look at this. This is why it's here that you can come back from that. You can be stronger. You can be effective for the kingdom. God, I prayed we would. And God, if this morning we need to make that decision to get back. God, if we've never made that decision and we know we lose out, if we die, we're going to hell. God, today will be that day we make that right. God, help us this morning. Push pride away, God, and move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand.
we were singing until it was put up there and she played that first note. But that was for somebody. That somebody was me. How do I know that I know that I know? It's because he's touched me. And I'm not the man that I used to be. Nor am I the man that I could have been. When we see things happen, that could have been us. But thank God, he touched me. Stay with us and eat. There's plenty over there. Y'all, y'all been blessed. The Lord sent an extra blessing this week. I got two possums and one armadillo on the road, freshly killed. Still kicking when I got them. So y'all are being, a, if it's in rice, be careful. You may not or may not know what it is. But anyway, just kidding. Go ahead and eat that rice. I didn't do that. Y'all have a blessed day. Have a good evening today. Tell someone about Jesus. I'm going to pray. If y'all would do this too. If y'all let our elders go first, let them skip you in line. Because if you live long enough, you're going to be there yourself. And a hungry old man is ill. Don't worry, I won't be plugging in front. But just show them you love them, okay? (coughs) Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, how you use people. And the thoughts that you can give them that will allow you to. And God, the situations in our life, only you and that person know. But God, if, if it's an issue today, I pray you don't let up. I pray that you would show yourself so much that they would have to do something to get ease from that. Because what joy it is to serve you when you walk into fellowship. God, I pray you bless them, love on them, let them know you care. And God, for a lost person, God, I pray that you not make this the last chance they get. But God, that you would give them another chance and God, they would yield to that and be saved. Because eternity is banking on it. It will make a difference. Now, God, as we go next door to eat and fellowship together just as y'all did in those days. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless, bless the bread and bless the food and what we eat. Lord, as we smile and enjoy the things of this life together and the relationship we have with you, God, that it would fill our hearts full of joy and our stomachs full of joy, that we would use that as we go out. And not only tell them how full we got in the flesh, but how full we are in the spirit, and we want to let them know the love of Jesus. Go with us now, Father. Have your will and way. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.